You always say to get to the truth, follow the money. And the money is saying that Anthony Albanese's gaffe about the unemployment rate could see him contribute to the unemployment rate. Sportsbed had Labor at $1.44. That's 14 cents higher than before Albanese said this. National unemployment rate at the moment uh, is, uh, I think it's 5.4, uh, uh, sorry. The coalition moved from 3.15 to 2.70 after that blunder and after ScoMo answered the questions about unemployment and interest rates. Well, 0.1% is the cash rate. It's been there for some time. Nailed it! Except he didn't actually nail it because the cash rate, which he was asked about, is different to the Reserve Bank official interest rate. The official rate is the rate at which the Reserve lends money to the banks. That's 0.1%. The cash rate is the rate at which banks lend money to each other. At the time when everyone was being asked that question, it was around 0.6%. Nerd! Wow, that guy was even ginger. <laughs> Elbow apologised and then he tried to move on. He thought it was done and dusted. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. And 24 hours later, he was reliving the nightmare. I made a mistake and guess what? I fessed up to it. Anthony said, and I quote, I'm not making excuses for it as he then deftly made an excuse for it. We dealt with uh, the uh, young Frankie and uh, I, I had uh, the, uh, the issue of uh, children's health, hearing and all of those issues in my head. And then he delivered the sound bite he hoped would distract everyone, which it did. So here's a Taylor Swift comment for you. My theory is shake it off. Sky News, which loves kicking a man when he's down, brought up footage from 2012 when Albo was sprung lifting lines from the film The American President. Just compare the pair. In Australia, we have serious challenges to solve and we need serious people to solve them. We have serious problems to solve and we need serious people to solve them. Unfortunately, Tony Abbott is not the least bit interested in fixing anything. Bob Rumson is not the least bit interested in solving it. He's only interested in two things. He is interested in two things. Making Australians afraid of it. Making you afraid of it. And telling them who's to blame for it. And telling you who's to blame for it. Ten years old, but still pretty funny. That wasn't the first time Labor's looked to Hollywood for inspiration. This was Kevin Rudd on Q&A a year after Elbow impersonated Michael Douglas. For you, Kevin, if you call yourself a Christian, why don't you believe the words of Jesus in the Bible? Well, okay, mate, thank you. Well, mate, if I was going to have that view, uh, the Bible also says that slavery is a natural condition. That was uncannily similar to another fictional American president. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21-7. Just f***ing hopeless. John Howard isn't letting Albanese off the hook. Well, he let him off and then he put him back on. This is what Howard said immediately after Albo messed up. As an Albanese didn't know the unemployment. All right. So what? Which I thought showed John was indeed a statesman who was above the political fray, but it turns out... He's still a street fighter, because he was soon dumping on elbow with the rest of the world. He should have known that figure. Let me, let's not muck about. Should have. Anybody who wants to be Prime Minister should be on top of those figures. And he warned Liberal voters not to go with independence. As well he should. Disillusioned Conservative voters kicking another box is a big problem for Scott Morrison, especially if the other box is this guy. Sports bet has Clive Palmer's United Australia Party at pretty long odds. It's paying 67 bucks. Clearly his ad blitz isn't having the cut through he wanted. So I went to the UAP website to work out what was going wrong. Find anything that made any sense? No. But I did discover that the United Australia Party has an anthem. What's it like? It's exactly what you'd expect. It will be wildly popular with the inbred yokel pig farmers from the Queensland hinterland that I assume it was aimed at. I came along, sang a different song, and performed by. I know what I'll do. Gonna put my faith in a party of truth. Party of truth? The UAP website says it's going to limit home loans to 3% because. At 4%, over 60% of Australians will default on their mortgages and will lose their homes. That's just utter bullshit. Where do they get these numbers from? Followed by 57, and we're going to wind it up for you tonight with the number 34. All right, now... 
the anthem then bangs on about UAP having all the solutions. Won't let us bob around, we're gonna hit the ground, we have the antidotes. What? Hydroxychloroquine? <laughs> What's the chorus? You thought Tay-Tay was catchy. Get a load of this. And that's my kind of party, the United Australia party. Didn't really stretch themselves trying to find a word that rhymed with party there. Right away, rhyming Homer with Homer? Mwah! How long is it? It's nearly four minutes long, thanks largely to a guitar solo that goes on for longer than Slash in November Rain. <laughs> Stop. Okay, so you're not voting for Clive. No, his interest rate pledge would, not could, would lead to the collapse of the Australian banking system. You can't make a law to do it in the first place, just like you can't make a law preventing politicians bullshitting their way to your vote. Not just Palmer guilty there. Greens leader Adam Bant proved that in today's newspaper. Adam has teed off on Liberal MP Ben Morton because Morton reckons a Greens Labor alliance would be chaotic. Bant has accused Morton of being one of Scott Morrison's henchmen. Oh, dredger! Ben Morton was a bus driver before he <laughs> got into politics. But anyway, Bant used his 700-odd words to bag the energy industry, saying, amongst other things, that gas is as dirty as coal. No, it's not. He then blabbed on about fossil fuel and climate change and said, if we don't stop now, the hot wind coming from the east will increase. The hot wind from the east we're more worried about is you, sport. <laughs> Bant then outlines his alternate resources policy, which sounds like something co-authored by Hans Christian Andersen. Supporting workers and communities as we make green steel and alumina in the state. Invest in green hydrogen, mine and process critical minerals here and make batteries, wind turbines and solar panels in WA and export energy to Asia and the eastern states. Sounds like a dream come true. Oh, throw in some lashings of ginger beer and we're in a f***ing Anita Blyton novel. Go and do it, Adam. Maybe you can get some Care Bears and Pixies and Elves and Unicorns to help you. You can't just click your fingers and the world's suddenly like Pandora out of Avatar. Lloyd Rainey might want to click his fingers and be somewhere else. I mean, he's just got some more money out of the cots, but nowhere near as much as he wanted. He was awarded $2.6 million in one of Australia's biggest defamation payouts after major crime detective Jack Lee said this back in 2007. He is now a suspect in the murder of his wife. In 2012, Lloyd was acquitted of the murder of his wife, Corin, and he set about suing the WA police force. He won a 10 million and thought 2.6 was chump change, so he took his case to the Court of Appeal. That court has just said he was due an extra 160 grand in interest, but that's it. Do you reckon that's fair? No. But I don't think anything the courts do make any sense, so no shock there. The judges seem to have ruled that any lost income after 2012 came about because a prospective client was less likely to engage Lloyd because he had taped his wife on the phone, not because he was suspected of his wife's. Murder. What are his options now? Uh, he could go to the High Court. Very long odds, but as Anthony Albanese has just discovered, that can change very quickly. Yeah. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.